Did Manitowoc County Deputy Andy Colburn have possession of Teresa Halbach's car in 2005 before it was found at Avery's Auto Salvage? Today on the Jim Haggerty Show. Welcome back, everybody, to another special report. Convicting a Murderer, Episode 6, is now streaming on Daily Wire+. Plus. Of course, it is the 10-part rebuttal to Making a Murderer. And fair disclosure, I have a role in Convicting a Murderer. I reported extensively on the Stephen Avery case after Making a Murderer dropped in 2015 on Netflix. And my investigative anecdotes are sprinkled throughout the rebuttal series. That, again, is in its sixth episode dropped today and we're still talking about andy colburn folks and whether he actually helped plant evidence to frame stephen avery and later brendan dassey including Teresa halbach's 1999 toyota rav4 which was discovered on november 5th 2005 on the avery property most importantly folks we are still talking about colburn because did he, the question is, make a dispatch call to verify the RAV4's license plates on November 4th? Well, looking at these license plates, let's jump in. Now, the theory is that Colburn either had possession of the car or the plates, and he was looking at the plates again when he called dispatch to confirm those numbers. Now, that theory it's not the first time. For those who are first, wa- or who may be watching Making a Murderer for the first time, um, this may be the first time they've ever heard of this theory. But um, and if so, it's the first time it was ever introduced. Now, this theory, all all of the framing defense, it was started by Stephen Avery long before he even knew who Dean and Dean Strang and Jerry Buting were. Um, Stephen Avery started talking to, to reporters, um, TV reporters, the night that Stephen, or the night that Teresa Halbach w- was reported missing. TV cameras were rolling outside of, his, uh, of Stephen Avery's house or the day after, and he immediately started to talk about himself as a suspect and whether, um, uh, whether Manitowoc County was setting him up. So there's this framing defense and cops planning evidence started right before the the bones were found before the car was found and it ramped up as Avery uh, evidence started to to, uh, stack up against Stephen Avery and the theory that Andy Colburn was involved in this and he made this nefarious phone call was floated by Dean Strang at trial with the idea to get the jury to believe that Colburn didn't have a warrant to seize the vehicle on November 4th so he helped orchestrate the November 5th discovery of course, this it, had it worked, it would have been a huge boon for Strang and Buting, since they also attempted to impeach Pam Sturm's testimony about how she actually found the Toyota on the uh, on the salvage line, uh, yard at the salvage yard. Nevertheless, the theory about the license plate call grew even bigger legs when Kathleen Zellner included it in her 1,200-page, uh, her first 1,200-page uh, uh, motion to win Stephen Avery a new trial that was uh, filed in 2017. Now, she actually adds to the theory in that initial motion. And, you know, in, in her version of events, not only did Colburn make the call from his cell phone, which he does admit, um, he did so on November 4th which was his day off, mind, uh, mind you. And he was with, according to Zellner, the quote-unquote real killer or an accomplice involved in planting the vehicle. Zellner claims that during Colburn's call, someone can be heard in the background shouting about the car or contents of the vehicle. According to Avery's motion for post-conviction relief, filed on June 7, 2017, quote, the killer returned to the Avery property with Sergeant Colburn in the, on the evening of November 4, 2005, under the pretense of helping Sergeant Colburn search for Miss Hallbach's vehicle. Mr. Avery's brother Chuck told police that on November 4th, he saw unidentified headlights in the salvage yard that evening. Sergeant Colburn, without probable cause for a search warrant for the Avery property, unwittingly relied upon the killer, a civilian, to find Miss Hallbach's vehicle on the Avery property. The individual who helped Sergeant Colburn to the RAV4 on the Avery property was most likely the real killer he, because he was able to enter the Avery property and quickly located the vehicle in the dark or with limited lighting. His words, quote, It's hers, end quote, 
shouted out when he looked in the vehicle and clearly recognized her personal effects, established that he was a close friend of Ms. Halbach. Sergeant Colburn called Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department dispatch to confirm Ms. Halbach's license plate number, end quote. Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, this is Lynn. Hi, Andy. Can you run Sam William Henry 582? See if he comes back to that. Sam William Henry 582. I, I need to tell them, please. All righty. Do you speak any Spanish there, Andy? Hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to call on the top of the list. It's fine. On call didn't call me back. So when I get in trouble, Andy, I get in trouble. <laughs> you know, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. My, my favorite one is in the city of Manitowoc. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, it shows that she's a missing person. And it lists to Teresa Hallback. Okay. Okay, that's what you're looking for, Andy? 99 Toyota. Yep. Okay, thank you. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Now, convicting a murderer does not go into Zellner's version of events, but it does a deep dive into this accusation that Andy Colburn helped plant the car and the key. And before we get into any of that, let's look into making a murderer theories that have really helped keep Colburn in the spotlight, because there are several of them. And as claimed in Kathleen Zellner's other post-conviction motions. Now, th- these motions claim uh, or include affidavits from witnesses, including one that claims who claims he saw Teresa Hallbach's RAV4 parked on Wisconsin Highway 147 before it was discovered on the Avery property. Now, th- there was an area of 147. Now, if you remember, Stephen Avery claims that uh, Teresa Hallbach turned off of his property after she took pictures on the Highway 47. Not too far from there, there's this little turnaround area where this witness claims that he saw the car before it was actually found. Now, he claims that uh, this, this man claims that he thought nothing of this until he noticed a missing persons flyer with a picture of the RAV4 at a nearby gas station. And when he returned, after witness, after seeing the flyer, he returned to the area on 147, and the Toyota was not there. Now, I, I did reach out to this witness in 2017, and he claimed that he reported this car, uh, the car sighting, to who? Andy Colburn. And he says he ran into Andy Colburn at the same gas station, and he claims Colburn never really followed up on the Toyota sighting at all, and that nobody from the sheriff's department ever got back to him. Of course, I actually I also followed up with the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, and they were unable to confirm that any such exchange between Colbert and this witness ever occurred. However, always a however in this case, I was able to confirm that several law enforcement agencies were tracking down and they were working numerous RAV4 and Teresa Hallbach sightings in the days after she was reported missing, even after her cremains were found in Avery's fire pit. And, of course, similar reports, including those involving, of course, Andy Colburn again, also increased after Making a Murderer dropped in 2015. Now, we know a number of these uh, these post-Making a Murderer claims were listed in Zellner's um, uh, briefs as Brady violations. In other words, they were exculpatory facts that she claims were not shared with Stephen Avery's trial lawyers. Of course, we now know that these motions for a new trial have all been denied at the trial court level and they are making a, about to make their way through the Wisconsin Court of Appeals. But let's get back to Andy Colburn and the license plates and the conclusion that convicting a murderer arrives at in episode six regarding this call that we do know was made. Now, it's worth mentioning that, again, though, that there's been a lot of confusion here regarding this call, and I was among the confused at first. Now, I say at first because in the the first set of phone records confirming this call did not show when the call was made. Now, in other words, like convicting a murderer notes, there were no timestamps on any of these calls, and we'll get back to that. But first, let's talk about Andy uh, Colburn's uh, claim uh, regarding this call. Of course, Andy Colburn has denied this. Um, up and down over the years, um, including some reporting I did, uh, he he claims he he never he, he did not find the car. He had no idea what anybody was talking about. He but but he does explain this call. He remembers this call. 
uh, Coburn claims that on November 3rd, 2005, the same night he was asked by Calumet County investigator Mark Weger to speak to Avery at his property about Avery's interaction with Halbach, Wiegert gave him Teresa Halbach's license plate number. Now, if you remember, Mark Wiegert was where? After um, he, uh, Teresa Halbach's mother uh, reported her missing on November 3rd, 2005, Mark Wiegert and um, various other officials uh, <clears throat> met the family and friends of Teresa Halbach at Teresa Halbach's home where they were, they were collecting personal items, um, in, including uh, um, hairbrushes. Uh, we, we, uh, we know there, there were some personal effects like that taken. And it was during this time that Mark Wiegert actually called Colburn, instructed him to uh, interview the Zipperers and interview Stephen Avery because as far as anybody knew, uh, Stephen Avery was the one of the last people. Zipperer and Avery were two of the last people to see Teresa Halbach uh, during her uh, work that day as a photographer, photographer for Auto Trader magazine. Now, getting back to Colburn. He gets the license plate number from Wiegert and as claimed in Convicting a Murder Episode 6, he made the call to confirm Teresa Halbach's license plates while he was in his squad car, which was parked in a church parking lot. Where? Across the street from George Zipperer's home. Now, it's not known whether uh, Avery's trial lawyers even bothered to confirm this, but a timestamp that was actually obtained shows the call was made when? at 9.22 p.m. on November 3rd, 2005, just like Andy Colburn claimed. It was not November 4th on um, Andy, Andy Colburn's day off. He did not use a cell phone to, because he wanted to hide anything. Andy Colburn knows that any call he makes to the dispatch is going to be recorded. Now, furthermore... He says he used the cell phone. It was a work-issued cell phone, by the way, because he didn't want Teresa Halbach's plate number to be broadcast over the air in case the possible kidnapper had a police scanner. So that kind of puts that to bed there in episode six. Of course, it, the episode also goes into the key. Was Andy Coburn responsible for planting the key well one might conclude that if, if had any any colburn would have had to have possession of the key would have had to obtain the key from somewhere there are some folks who still claim that andy colburn obtained the key from ryan hillegas and scott bladorn from the residents but had it if it was planted did that solidify the conviction that that's the question that i had if, did the police need to plant this key to solidify a conviction of Stephen Avery? Did they need the key to, to, to send Avery to prison? Well, they already had his blood. They already had the car. They already had the bones. His blood was in the vehicle. The key, I, I, you know, I don't believe, w w would have been the, uh, the linchpin to anything. I think the key w was just uh, kind of inadvertently found. Um, and I think that the rest of the evidence w was fairly strong. Now, episode six does cover this. But again, the question is, uh, was Andy Colburn involved in planting the car? Was he involved in planting the key? What do you think has this theory regarding the phone call finally been officially debunked by convicting a murderer in the episode that just streamed today? We are talking about episode six. They are now on Daily Wire Plus. Of course, Making a Murderer is still streaming on Netflix. But that's all the time we have today on this special report here on the show. We will see you next time. And in the meantime, have a good time looking this and other nuggets up on Al Gore's internet. <laughs>